Hello and welcome to Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast on all of the internet. My name is Patrick Nisley. My name is Matthew Stoner. My name is David Howe, and boy, oh boy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a very special guest on today's episode. The one and only Chad Andrews has joined the show. How's it going, Chad? Hello. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. That's right, Chad, you are here because this week we are talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. How could we not? Uh, right? It's the biggest, <laughs> uh, really big game. Biggest game of the year for Nintendo, maybe? Um, we'll talk about it. Uh, we're going to talk all about that. We got a lot of other stuff in the news. We finally got a date for the new Mario Kart 8 Deluxe next uh, booster course pass thing. Nailed it. Whew. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> some more details BCP. on Splatoon 3's next season. We got some Sonic creator news. Ooh. Um, and yeah, we're going to get all into Pokemon. But first... How's everybody doing? How was your week? What's going on in your world? David, you want to start us off? You're not. Um, on? yeah, I'm trying to think of what I did. Oh, okay. I, I, I some cool stuff happened uh, in my week. Uh, I was on a shoot uh, last week. Uh, my friend Christina Parrish, uh, who I uh, made the movie Call Me Brother with, uh, she wrote and is starring in a pilot for a TV series right now, and I was on set for that on Tuesday. That was really cool. And they wrapped up the whole thing. There was a big rap party on Saturday. And so, uh, went out to that and had a really good time. And, um, yeah, it was just cool to be around a bunch of production stuff again. It's been a yeah. while since I've done that. I saw uh, some filming at coconut club here in Austin. Yeah. We shot a coconut club. Uh, that was the day I was there. I actually played two characters. I played the bartender and a DJ. Um, <laughs> zero explanation as to why I'm two characters in one scene. Um, wearing the same clothes? No, no, different clothes. Okay. In fact, I had to do like six costume changes because they kept shooting scenes. They would shoot one with the bartender, then one with oh, the DJ. No. It was really annoying. But anyway, uh, <laughs> in my mind, we're uh, twins, like the Winkle Bosses. Uh, so if we get more episodes to the show, surely my storyline will be fleshed out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what about y'all? How was your week? I've been pretty good over here. Just uh, playing a lot of Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, I like it. That's my take. Hot take. Yeah, doing Sticks okay uh, over here too. Um, been dealing with some illness, but I think we'll get through it. And then you know, Thanksgiving break is a thing now. Kids get off entire weeks. Uh, yeah. Maybe not everywhere, but here at my school district. So. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Are you guys thankful, kid. by the way? Thanksgiving <laughs> coming up. We thankful? Are we th generally thankful speaking? Yeah. To be alive, yeah. Are you generally yeah. thankful? Generally yeah, thankful. I think so. Yeah. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> Chad. Yeah. How are you doing, Chad? Hey, I'm good. Yeah, I'm thankful for Pokemon, of course. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, and this past weekend, I uh, actually had a family Thanksgiving that um, I went up and joined, um, you know, family members did the whole uh, nine yards and uh, getting ready to do it all over again on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> all right. Very good. Awesome. Well, uh, last week we did an episode about the virtual boy and uh, we got lots of wonderful comments about that uh, over on Twitter. We got a nice comment from Andrew Valentine um, on the YouTube Ant Keeps Gaming uh, gave us a nice comment. Steve, Busam, and Record also commented there, and both of them mentioned about their childhood Virtual Boys and the games that they liked playing. Mm. And Steve's story about their uh, cousin breaking the stand was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, over on Facebook, Vincent Goodwin left a really nice detailed comment about some thoughts about, you know, what if the Virtual Boy had been branded more as a Game Boy 2 and um, also some facts about the Virtual Boy that we didn't get to include, but like about why it was red, because that was cheapest LED. Mm. And I don't know, just some really nice, well thought out thoughts. So join the join the Facebook group. Read Vincent's comments. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was a really good uh, point. I actually screenshotted that comment and shared it with our, our group because I was like, man, I think um, like I, I just I do think that. Cause we were talking about, it. it's like, man, this thing was kind of always destined to fail. But, uh, 
Vincent kind of put out a couple of good points there on like ways that it could have succeeded, right? If they, yeah, they, if, if they didn't make you stick your face in it, is probably the main <laughs> one. Uh, yeah. But, but you know, well, uh, yeah, we always appreciate hearing from people who listen or watch. So please do send us a note if you have any thoughts on today's episode. And also, we like it if you share our podcast online somewhere. And always remember, please to like and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, yeah, we got some. F- uh, video game and Nintendo news rumors to talk about. First up, Mario Kart 8 uh, Deluxe Wave 3 of the Booster Course Expansion Pass. Did I get it right? I don't, no, you had it right the first no time. No expansion. It's um, not the BCEP, it's the BCB. Wait, uh, BCP. Fuck. So, we we now know all the courses. Did we already know all the courses? I don't think we did, right? This was the announcement mm. for some most of these. We knew about a couple. Uh, so, we know what eight courses are coming. And we know when it's uh, going to be December seventh, so that's about two weeks away from from the um, the this episode coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, any now that we know all the courses, before we move on, anything you're excited about, David, as as our resident Mario Kart, you know? Oh expert? sure, I think I think there's a lot to to love in this group. Um, uh, you know, we got a couple new tour stages. Like we're going to get one tour stage per cup it seems uh, like a city is, one yeah like we got london think, loop and berlin byways and it was a one. dcd in our discord that said it was those are both kind of meh probably yeah but i think, <laughs> I they, think but they that. spice them up by they actually make them interesting by making them each lap different in the tour stages so i'm always kind of interested to see how they'll play out in that way um you know like it or hate it that's what they do on those and and, and i think that's fine um Let's see. Uh, Maple Treeway is a fan favorite. It's definitely one of my favorite Mario Kart Wii courses. So I'm really glad to see that come back. Uh, Peach Gardens. That's another one that we knew about was coming already. Um, Peach Gardens is an awesome course from Mario Kart DS. Uh, that was always one of my favorites from that game as well. And then, uh, yeah, 3DS Rainbow Road is looking good. Like, it definitely seems like the graphics, the longer these go on, the more times they have, the more time they're having to, like, actually make good looking <laughs> textures and <laughs> like you know what i mean they're starting to use them and all of these as they go so i think some of these are looking pretty good but um it's nice i, I know you said we didn't know about all of these but we actually knew about almost all of these if you counted the uh the, the, leaks. the yeah the data mines so the, the data mines have been pretty spot on um on like what people have been predicting um so yeah if you want to know I, I think the one change was maple treeway took the place of one of the double dash courses that was supposed to be in this Um, still a pretty big lack of double dash courses in this DLC, but uh, hopefully we get some more of those next year. Well, next up uh, the legend of Zelda tears of the kingdom, still trying to get used to that name um, has been officially raided in uh, South Korea. Um, Right. So guess that means, you know, that, it's very unlikely that it will get delayed again it, or, you know, that it's just a good sign for the release. Is that sort of the big takeaway from this? I mean, I guess you could say that it's rated in whatever the Korean system is 12 plus. So I don't know if that'll translate to a teen rating or an E10 in the US, probably an E10 um, in the US. I could um, see yeah, E10 or teen or something, but um yeah. but anyway, yeah, I don't know. What do you, what's the takeaway here that like that this game's locked for, what is it? May? Did the, is there a specific day in May? Or is it, yeah, the 12th of May. That's right. Yeah, I would be very fucking surprised if they push this back again. Um, I know it, in the in the thing, there is like a tiny little morsel in the description of the game from the Korean rating board saying something mm. about how it's a role-playing game for Nintendo Switch in which the stage of the adventure to find Zelda expands into the sky and beyond. Space. <laughs> yeah Final what's frontier. beyond the sky do you think he's going to space he's what do you going think to beyond space means do you think that means we'll be getting more than just hyrule and above it what's above above what's above the sky space what's above space <laughs> uh yahweh <laughs> <laughs> the tears of the kingdom yeah. uh, uh nice Anyway. But I mean, yeah, because I've been wondering that my, I mean, first of all, there's this is hype that this got uh, rated, right? I mean, it's just, yeah, I think that means that it's not going to get delayed anymore. But it's like, I do, I have been wondering really, like, is the game going to feel 
old having reusing Hyrule. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I do hope that that little morsel there kind of means something. Um, what do, do you guys? Would you guys be happy if it was just the same Hyrule again and some floating islands? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's the exact same map, maybe yeah. not. But honestly, it's been a while. You're, yeah, David. You're kind of insinuating that maybe they need to innovate in some of the like map structure or like level design. Well, I mean, it's just for me. It's like you know. I'm still extremely hyped for this game. They've been, they've taken so long making it that I'm sure they have something up their sleeve. Right. Yeah. But it's like, um, for me, I guess like I was a little bummed when the trailers came out and it's like the ground is just the same Hyrule. You know what I mean? And it's like, I know for me, like it's kind of hard for me to go back and play breath of the wild because the huge pull for me in that game was discovering, discovering new areas, right? It's like, I wish I could erase my memory of having played Breath of the Wild for the first time so mm. I can go out and discover all these places again. So I just hope that sense of discovery is like still a big part of this game. And it's not just like new shit piled into what you've already played. You know what I mean? That's fair. Yeah. I think it will be, but we'll find it, out. It probably will be. Uh, did you play Breath of the Wild, uh, Chad? I did. Uh, I have yeah. not finished it yet. Um, yeah. But yeah, I did get into it. And uh, it was actually my first Zelda title, um, which I don't oh, know if yeah. that was a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> must I be did. nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, um, Link's Awakening uh, came out and um, I did set aside Breath of the Wild and played that. And they are vastly different. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I do need to hop back into it and finish it at some point. Mm-hmm. it's an easy game to not finish because you can just spend a lot of time wandering. and you just don't want it to end <laughs> mm. <laughs> because you spend so much time in it that like you know you get to your own ending almost right yeah of just like once you once you bowl with the uh <laughs> the guy a hundred times that's when the game really ends <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no i think it's good to have breath of the wild as your first game because all the other zelda games like play so differently like this was such a departure that it's almost like it's not like this was iterating on a formula that already existed. It's not like you play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 and then it's really hard to go back and play the first game because there's no manual. You know what I mean? They're like totally different styles of games in comparison almost, right? So I think uh, I think you got a whole whole life of Zelda games out of you, Chad. <laughs> uh, we already talked about this a little bit, so we won't spend too much time on it, but Splatoon 3, they've been kind of drip feeding information about the uh, December... Uh, season that's coming they're calling chill season uh in particular they showed off brine water springs as a new uh battle stage and the return of marooners bay for salmon run so we're getting a little bit more info as uh i wouldn't be surprised if they you know drop specifics about a few more things in the next week or what have you before december but um, yeah, that looks it's nice to see all these this little bit of new content coming to Splatoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, excited about that. The the um, uh, the catalog they also sh- said in uh, two point of this game you'll be able to like peruse from the very beginning, so you can like mm, no pick. Yeah, you can kind of pick what you want coming up a lot easier. So I think that stuff like that is not something anybody uh, was expecting. So it's like. I'm kind of expecting a whole bunch of little tweaks like that throughout it now. Um, now mm-hmm. that we know that stuff more than just weapons and, and uh, stages are coming. And uh, David, you dropped this in here. It's a good reminder for us all that unfortunately Killer Queen Black is the another multiplayer game on the Switch. Great game we've been enthusiastic about over the years uh, is going offline at the end of this month. So I don't know. We got another week to play together. We got to organize at least one play of this game after this podcast releases and before the, the yeah. next one. Yeah. Um such a good game. I think the uh devs did a um like a live stream tonight that I wasn't able to catch. Uh we record this on Monday. Um but just kind of like as kind of a postmortem <laughs> quite literally a postmortem uh <laughs> of this game. Um but yeah reminder if you have this game and it's all cross platform too. So if you have it on Xbox or PC or Switch Hit us up. We'd love to play with you. Uh, and then uh, this, the, I, I'll be honest, I haven't like dug into this. I just saw the headline pretty much. So I'm hoping that somebody else can explain this. But the uh, 
uh, Yuji Naka, who is uh, one of the co-creators, I guess, of the original Sonic game, uh, was arrested in, in Japan, correct, for ins- alleged, we should say, insider trading. Um, I don't know what what are the details around this? I guess something about gaming companies and stuff like. Right. Like he knew about some merger or something like that. He was an employee at Square Enix and they had a uh, a another game company called Aiming. I'm not familiar with Aiming, so feel free to jump in here at any time. Um, they were going to re- release a new title and uh, mm. he ended up uh, investing, you know, significant amount of money, about uh, twenty thousand dollars in shares of this company because they're making a game with Square Enix. Yeah, they're making a I think it's a mobile um it's like a mobile Dragon Quest game, right? So it's like Dragon Quest is like huge in Japan. Um and uh you know, they fucking like shut down schools like on the day the Dragon Quest games come out because they know everybody's going to skip and like work people call on to work and shit on those days. So it's it's basically like a national holiday in Japan when a new <laughs> Dragon Quest game comes out, right? Um, so this is massive. And then, you know, obviously mobile gaming is huge there as well. Right. And, um, this is kind of like a bit of a move into mobile, uh, for Square Enix. And then, yeah, it was like him. And I think two other, um, like industry insiders in Japan, um, put like a lot of money into it. I think some of the other guys put in like millions of dollars into it and stuff like that, uh, trying to profit off of it. And then they just all got busted. Um, um, which feels like insider trading has got to be, there's always a paper trail. I don't know why people do it all the time. <laughs> hard to avoid, I guess, if you or not avoid, but hard to like, I don't know. Yeah. I was going to say hard to resist, but I guess it's not. If if you know something, you probably shouldn't be doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> something but, you want uh, to tell us, Patrick? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't investigate me. No. Yeah. I, okay. Yo, I, don't have, I don't like one In the clear. If you see Patrick putting a bunch of money into Nintendo, that means a Switch Pro announcement is imminent, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Well, I, just, I, well, we need to talk about a Switch Pro at some point today, but I'm sure we will. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I think it's I think this is kind of interesting because Yuji Naka is like just like a weird kind of kooky fucking dude. Like whenever you know I saw that he was arrested, I was like, man, for some reason I'm like not surprised. You know, <laughs> like he uh, he's always been like kind of out there, and you know, recently we talked about he was like dragging square Enix for Balan Wonderworld, right. Being like, yo, they was like throwing him under the bus being like, they didn't give me time to complete the game. That's right. This is all their fault. And he was like making a big stink about it. So he had already kind of alienated himself quite a bit. You know, that people don't really dish about shit that happens in the video game industry in Japan. Like it's all pretty tightly kept uh, over there. The culture is just different than it is here. And so, um, I don't know. I just feel like, to me, I just feel like he was trying to like stick it to Square Enix by making a bunch of money off of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then I just kind of bit him in the ass. But that's interesting. Maybe that's a, a fun conspiracy. Uh, fun is uh, maybe not the right word to use. Uh, but maybe because Balan Wonder Wonderland Wonder World Wonder World Wonder Balan. It's Wonderland. never it's never what you think with Balan. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's always the one you think it is. Never isn't. ever. Maybe he's like. This wasn't successful. You are maybe desperate for money. You spent all this time developing this world and this character, so it wasn't successful. And maybe you're looking for an out. And maybe this out is investing into this company because you have insider information. I think that's totally what it was. And I think more than anything, he was butthurt, right? Um, about the whole thing. And he made that very clear on Twitter, on uh, Elon Musk's Twitter. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm currently like now, now that you're talking about conspiracy stuff, I was already thinking about this, but I'm like, somebody needs to make a Yuji Naka movie uh, just about this guy and make him into like a James McAfee type character. Let's do uh, it, Dave. Yeah, I'll invest yeah. in your Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not very good at writing scripts. So if anybody wants to team up, let me know. Uh, another uh, Japanese developer. They are Japanese, I believe. Uh, Team Ninja uh, just had like, I guess, some sort of company keynote where the president uh, offhand mentioned that they are going to be uh, rebooting both Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden series games will probably not going to be happening like anytime soon because it's just you know uh 
being mentioned, but those for fans of those series, that's exciting news. Um, potentially big news there. Um, yeah, yeah I think yeah. this is huge. I mean, Dead or Alive is a great fighting game franchise with the new Tekken Street Fighter coming out and maybe a new Dragon Ball uh, Fighters game coming out with the next couple of years. It would make sense to have uh, a Dead or Alive franchise uh, representation in the fighting game community. Dare we see Extreme Beach Volleyball 2023 <laughs> mm. on the horizon? Feature, featuring uh, Ryu Hayabusa. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's why people buy those games. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Maybe in a bikini. Over, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Ninja Gaiden as well. Um, obviously, a long running series with a lot of really great, like modern versions that are now like in desperate need of a remaster or reboot or something. And uh, I've been hearing a bit of rumors circling around that Platinum Games might be involved in the Ninja Gaiden reboot, which uh, would kind of make a lot of sense, I think, right? Uh, that's a pretty good team up. Um, so we'll see. That's definitely just rumor territory. But, um, you know, this is all just announced. So uh, it was pretty cool. Hopefully some of those come to the Switch. I know like a recent Ninja Gaiden collection did. So, And then um, our last uh, news item is to just talk about the Pokemon games, which will kind of lead us into our main topic. We'll we'll stick to the news aspects of this, which it would be maybe reviews and sales. Um, so, Pokemon, the games are reviewing okay. I mean, pretty well, pretty well, I guess. But I, I read some article headline or something that was like they're reviewing the worst of any Pokemon game in like twenty years or something. But it's still like a seventy-seven on Metacritic. So mm. um, that's not i don't know and then it's selling like hotcakes right uh i guess that uh somebody i think it was maybe somebody at the pokemon company said that it's the highest amount of pre-orders for any pokemon game ever mm. um <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> ha <laughs> yeah it's just yeah uh, I'll save that. I'll save that. And and then um, the launch, I think, in, in the UK is maybe the only place we have like numbers that the first week sales are like a 25% higher than Sword and Shield were. Um, so game, we can expect this to be in the top 10. Can we expect this to be in the top 10 Nintendo sellers? Very that the next quarterly report. I think so. Oh, is definitely. Sword and Shield still it in there? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl still in there? It was last time, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so definitely. I mean, I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna top those. I mean, the okay. I'll say why I I, I sneered whenever you talked about the pre order <laughs> stuff because Jeez. this game, and we'll get into this definitely in the main topic. But it's like the one thing, the like controversy that's blown up on the internet right now is how like buggy and fucked up this game is, right? And it's something that every review talked about. Right. And not just like, oh, hey, there are some bugs, but it's all like there are bugs and it affected my enjoyment of the game, you know, uh, be it graphically or performance or otherwise. Right. And, you know, this game, we talked about this on the last episode, like, when are they going to drop the review embargo for this game? Right. And this was it was 24 hours beforehand. Right. So I think I'm wondering if like this is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back on like people pre-ordering these games as much <laughs> or if not that if this game has a a lower shelf life now that reviews are out people have their hands on it you know what i mean because always there's a huge push right at the beginning when a new pokemon game comes out but then there's also a huge amount of tail and i'm wondering if this like negative press on like how the games are performing is going to have any impact um you guys are shaking your no, that's nodding and patrick is shaking his head what do you guys think about that <laughs> I would love for that to be true, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I would also love for them not to make, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars in a game that they're putting what looks like or that experiences is uh, low effort or medium effort into a franchise. That's one of the most like popular polish, franchises whatever, yeah, in like the world. Um, I would love for that to be true. So they make a make a good game. Great. Right. Yeah. Like this game, and again, we should probably save some of this for the main topic, yeah. but it's like this game deserves better, right? Than what it is, 
because it is a good game. Right. And so I'm just interested to see, I guess this is all a roundabout way of me seeing if there's going to be any effect on sales on yeah. this. I mean, realistically, probably this is going to be one of the top selling games on was, the switch and it's probably going to be the, the top selling Pokemon game on the switch. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think it's going to, so you, your, your comment made me go and look and I, I looked and I think it's like, I actually don't have it open anymore. It's like 25 something million copies of, of sword and shield and like 16 or something million of, of brilliant. Dino. I bet it'll be both of them, but we'll see combined. Uh, combined, <laughs> maybe I don't know. That's pretty big. Uh, I, I more will than say- Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I don't think it would actually. Yeah. Mario Kart's like fucking fifty. This is a fifty. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, well, I, 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 I will say like, I like held off buying the game, and then it was like, and then I, I, I read the reviews, and I was like, uh, I don't know, and then I started seeing all the like compilations of like glitches on Twitter. And then I bought the game. So, so maybe <laughs> it is not going to have any effect. Because he's like, it's kind of like, I kind of want to experience some of these myself. This is kind of funny. Uh, let's, but I don't know. let's save it. Yeah, let's. Right. we're going to talk about the good and the bad uh, of Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet when we come back after this short break. All right, we're back. And this week we are talking all about Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. The the games just came out this past Friday. So it's, you know, we, it's, we record this on Monday evening. So uh, everybody's had a couple of days to get as far as they've gotten. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about it in the news, but like, how, how's everybody feeling about these? Just sort of big picture, enjoying yourself playing it. What what are the, you know, big picture feelings, thoughts? Go around Chad? Yeah, Chad. Yeah, I'll hop in. Um, it's been interesting. Um, I am a longtime Pokemon fan. When I buy um, the Switch, it's for that purpose. Mm. Um, I've, I've just followed it every single generation. Um, that's my game. Nice. This one has been interesting, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, there's been a lot of good and a lot of questionable decisions uh, that I'm I'm really trying to struggle to figure out what the answers were or what the the thought process was. Um, and we can get into that, of course, but it's it's been, you know, good and bad. I think ultimately I will mm. end up loving the games. Um, I'm a little bit more forgiving than probably most folks. Um, but there are some glaring issues for sure. Yeah. H- have you put a lot of time into it, Chen? So far? Um, I've sunk about 25 hours at this point. That's, that's um, I've, not, <laughs> I've not progressed um, a lot, which I think is a good thing um, because I'm finding myself really, you know, immersed in the world, which is nice because that's not the norm for Pokemon games. No. Um, and uh, there's a lot you can do without going very far. Um, that said, you know, the things that I am seeing visually, which you all touched on a little bit earlier, and I know we'll get into it uh, more here. The graphics, uh, wow, they're just really choppy. It's rough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not nearly as far as 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 you are, Chad. But um, but I but I am enjoying this game more than I was anticipating. I think. I think part. You know, I think some of that was tempered by that first like 24, 48 hours of discourse online. Like after the reviews dropped, I was like, oh man, this game's gonna be fucked up. You know, and it like kind of is definitely. And I think if I play it more, I'll definitely like see a lot more of the issues that people are talking about. But I was like, okay, this isn't like unplayable. Like a lot of people made it out to be right. Like um, it's not quite like, a you know, you bought Cyberpunk 2077 on the PS4 and you just can't play the thing. You know what I mean? It's not like that. Right. Um, uh, I'm 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 actually quite enjoying it. Um, you know, I like the openness. Uh, I like the characters. Um, I like this idea of the school. It kind of like gives it a nice home base. I think that's something that, you know, um, Arceus also did really well is having kind of that spot that you return to. Um, not as much of a reason to do that in this game as there was in Arceus. Um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I think uh, a lot, I think they took some good things from Arceus. And I think that th- I, there's even more I wish they took from Arceus, right? Um, there's there's a lot of specific stuff that I kind of wish they would have brought into this game, but it's part of what made that game feel so good to play, right? Um, but yeah, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it, to be honest. I think the scope and the ambition um, is definitely, 
you know, surpasses anything they've done before. And, and so it's, it's nice to see them getting bigger and moving in the right direction. I just wish that they were already there instead of just continuing to move in that direction, which uh, kind of is the, the game freak way. It seems. Yeah. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. I was just no, going to say like, that's you talking about the scope. Like I want to hear what Matthew has to say too, but just, I have to throw this in there. It's like, that's the, the good thing about it, but that's the problem that they have these rushed cycles. And so the scope mm-hmm. of this being so big and not having time to properly, you know, work out all the kinks is the, to me is clearly what the problem is, but Matthew, yeah. how, how are you feeling? About yeah. It? Yeah. I'm about, I would say uh, five to six hours in. Uh, I like it. I, I feel this way every time I start a new Pokemon game, which is I have a hard time starting them because the t- that first hour is tutorial. Oh, and I just laborious. want, I would just want to like jump in, give me the Mon that flies and uh, the motorcycle Mon that uh, could ride you around. <laughs> um, and just give me the opportunity to make my own choices rather than walking me through. Uh, I, I really, I think I started this game Saturday, Saturday in the afternoon, but it took me a couple of days to like, all right, I need to download it. I need to like start it because that first hour is just so much. Uh, Agreed. It's, it's just, it's just a lot. I'm just like, get me into the action. I understand how menus work. Um, but I, so I have these two warring ideas whenever I start a new Pokemon game, which is like, okay, this game isn't necessarily made for me. Who's played other games. This is probably to introduce Pokemon to a whole new generation of people, um, and trying to like hold these two hold space for these two perspectives, which is existing Pokemon fans who want a new experience and brand new Pokemon fans that want a brand new experience. And I just really always struggle with that first hour. Yeah, it was the same for me, man. Like I on. Yeah, it was Saturday. I like started it early in the day. I'm like, I'm going to play Pokemon all weekend. Right. And then it was like and then I just put it down. I was just like so bored just because there's it just moves at a snail's pace at the very beginning. And there's so much. And it's like you walk like five feet and then another cutscene triggers. You know what I mean? And it's Mm -hmm. just kind of like that loop. So I ended up just like playing actually F zero GX a lot instead because I could just pick that up and play immediately. It really scratched Which my is, gaming uh, itch. F zero yeah. is like a fast racing yeah, game. It's exactly, like you went yeah. on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, but then it was, but then what I streamed on Sunday night, uh, this game last night, and um, and then I finally got past kind of the whole, you know cutscene 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 you meet you meet the 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 dinosaur bike and you know all that stuff um and it was really great oh uh, so side note i do want to give a shout out um to uh mr woes 69 uh somebody i do not know that uh popped into my stream and gifted me the other two starters uh right after i finished the first time i was able to like go to a Pokestop. holy shit he like yeah so now i'm start i started the game with all three starters thanks to the kindness of a stranger on twitch so I, that's that's nice as well <laughs> i i think that the this game in particular has a real almost identity crisis because of what y'all are talking about this this sort of slow intro for a new pokemon player and then at some point not too long after those first hour or two it's completely open yeah. And like, and that's just weird. Like it, because it, like my son, I didn't play that. I, I kind of, I every once in a while I helped him, but I watched him play it and I didn't think he was going to like it, but he got really into it. And I think he really is enjoying the exploration, but it's some, he would just fight monsters and get his butt kicked. And I'd be like, no, you got to maybe go to a different area or grind a little bit, you know? And then it's like, so it didn't work <laughs> that well for him, you know? I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but it definitely feels like there should be a hold minus to just pick your fucking starter and play the game or like, you know, like I have played a hundred Pokemon games. Can I please just get started? And then maybe yeah. even a little more rails for somebody that's new to, I don't know. Um, anyway. Yeah. I think, yeah. Give me the option to choose my starting experience. Yeah, even like uh, David, you talked about this right when you leave the the house. The professor comes over to your house and invites you to <laughs> to the to the building. I don't know where. I don't know what the building is. The neighbor's house. Yeah, yeah. Right but like you dean are of the school. Yeah, 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 you are. Your character is walking, and the fact that I couldn't yeah. like I couldn't <laughs> move or run. I thought like there was a run button, and I thought my buttons were broken. 
Well, you just have to plug in a second controller and hold up on both. Then you <laughs> can run. That's quite literally true. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, that's a bug in the game. If you if you're playing in handheld mode and also have a controller connected, if you press up on both of them, you move twice as fast. <laughs> Nice. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But a lot, just of, that, a lot of weird, a lot of weird uh, tricks you can do in this game to like, s- like do speed strats that are not intended <laughs> that everybody discovered within hours. But anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> now, just that, that early walking animation where you're, you're walking down the hill to the building it, I was like, I'm going to walk there, but I'm going to hate it the entire time. <laughs> and then halfway through, it tells you how to run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. See, this is this is why I don't want Captain Falcon to leave his car, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's just not, not not the speed you're used to. <laughs> uh, what, what what do you think about this, Chad? Do you think do you, what do you think about the game's kind of like identity? Like, how did the oh, were you ready for it? Yeah. It, well, um, I was excited, of course, because you know once you got past the tutorial, uh, it is pretty much choose your own adventure at that point, which is cool. What I did find interesting um, is that maybe for a newer player, <clears throat> there are a lot of things that aren't explained to you. And there are a lot of things that I discovered by, by chance. So for example, on the map, uh, if you pull it up, you can uh, get some notes and some tips from the game on maybe who you should challenge or battle or where you should go. Um, but if you don't know to look at those places, if you're a newer player, um, you know, you might go and, and try to beat the final boss uh, from the get-go and then, of course, get your butt kicked. So uh, it was interesting for sure um, mm-hmm. because I, I do think that kind of what, y- what y'all are saying, it doesn't really know who this is marketed for. I know generally speaking, it's not usually geared to someone in my age group, but it kind of is too. So, sort, yeah. is, sort of it's, is, yeah. right? Because they want to have some fan service. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's Pokemon's problem overall, I think, a little bit. Um, of yeah, I mean, I think that's why it's like this. Yeah. I think they're, I think they're, try, I think they're trying to appeal to both, right? Which is good. I mean, I mean, like Arceus felt like it was also more for like people who have played Pokemon before, right? Like it was like, hey, this is the spin on the idea, right? Um, um, and yeah, so to to finish that thought too. Also, like my son is newish to Pokemon. He's, he's played a little bit of the intros of some of the other games when we've had to talk about them. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like he likes a big open world to explore. And I think that that's kind of what's hooked him. Like, you know what I mean? And, and so I do think a new player does kind of expect or not, maybe not expect it, but like a super railroaded 2d game might be an off putting to a seven or eight year old, you know? Um, yeah. I- I fully thought that moving forward, because Legends Arceus was such a hit with older fans, that whenever there is going to be a newer generation, they were going to have that be, you know, the go-to for the older fans. And then the main series games are going to be really focused on, you know, pretty linear stories, maybe more 2D, uh, really hand-holdy. Um, and this game really is not that. So Right. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, too, you were... You know, we were talking about Breath of the Wild earlier. It's like um, you want to look at the beginning of a game that really works. That's Breath of the Wild. That's like this, right? Because it's like, you know, it's not just like tutorial, tutorial, cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. It's like it gives you a little area that's open to explore, right? And it's you've got this whole little thing, a sandbox to kind of like teach yourself all the mechanics of the game, right? And then all of a sudden it opens up, but you've already gotten used to what you're going to be doing in a smaller version of what you're about to do. This is kind of like the beginning of every Pokemon game. And now it's Breath of the Wild. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, And so like, so I think that there's a lesson to learn there somewhere in there. I'm not like a game designer. So it's like hard for me to say exactly what you do, but it's like, I think there's definitely something to it. Also, can I just say, We've got a million Breath of the Wild likes out right now from Sonic Frontiers to this to pretty much everything that's coming out now. Elden Ring. If you're going to do a Breath of the Wild game, make it to where you can climb everything. Every <laughs> every game that wants to be Breath of the Wild is not going to be as good as Breath of the Wild if you can't climb everything. That's just my two cents. Uh, so anyway, sorry, I had to get that out before I forgot it. <laughs> Um, yeah. What, so what do you want to talk about first? I mean, the, I think we maybe should talk about some of the ugliness of the game first. I think the graphics, like, I think, hey, I think can, it's hard can to we talk ignore. about starters. 
Uh, oh, starters. Yeah, yeah. we talk about starters. Like when you start the game, who'd you yeah, pick? Who, yeah, who'd y'all choose? <laughs> That's the difference between you and Patrick, Matt. Yeah. I want to uh, talk about how ugly Patrick's like, let's talk about how the ugliness of Pokemon's yeah. Color Violet. Yeah. You're like, can we talk about the cute little people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's where Pokemon and maybe they, like, honestly, that's an interesting dynamic to talk about because yeah. the characters are what they put their effort into, right? And totally. like, right. it looks yeah. great. Yeah. Like those little cute and anim- new animals look pretty good. And the human like the characters grass are well designed as well, I think. But, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, let's talk about the cute characters first. Yeah. I, I chose uh, Quaxley. Who'd you all start with? Quaxley. Yep. Okay. I went I went Sprigatito this time. But then also uh, uh, the kindness of a stranger <laughs> yeah. uh, gave me the other three. So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we we uh, did Sprigatito in our house as well. Mm. Right. I will say now that I have all three and I'm using all of them, I think I'm going to uh, Fue Coco, or who I nicknamed Tomas. Uh, I don't know any of the Pokemon's names because I nickname all of them. I nickname <laughs> every single Pokemon, so I don't know any of their names. But um, yeah, Tomas is my go-to at this point. Um, Sprigatito, what did I name? I named Sprigatito Mau Mau, and then I uh, named Quaxley Ducksworth, uh, which we discussed last episode. Yeah, I think I think the designs of those characters are great, and I mean I've only seen the second evolution of Sprigatito, but um, you know it's all right. <laughs> He's bipedal. Yeah, <laughs> not sure how I feel about that, but you know. <laughs> Patrick, talking about graphics, um, the 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 frame rate just dips at certain parts. I um, mean, it is very obvious, and it really takes you out of the immersive open world. I think it's it's yeah. really hard to like get back into it once you're jumped out of it when there's lots of Pokemon on the screen or there's a big uh, 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 animation or 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 something it it drops from like thirty frames to like feels like ten or fifteen frames. It's yeah, and let's not forget that Pokemon Legends Arceus was also pretty rough looking game you know what i, I mean like that was look, a, later looked worse right yeah that, I, mean, eh, I don't know it's cl- they're pretty comparable right like how these two games look i think i think this game is even bigger and there's no loading screens you know what i mean so it's like so i feel like it's kind of except when they had they, to town? Uh, uh, through the gates <laughs> may, i guess so yeah um <laughs> yeah i guess you're right but um but it's like but you know Regard, the, the space is bigger yeah. than like they had more bespoke areas yeah, in Arceus, right? So it's like, so so I kind of get that, but I think the real problem is, is that that game at least like ran at a pretty solid thirty frames per second the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's the the biggest issue, and I think a lot of the reason seems to be because there's memory leaks, right? I think you know there's bad frame rates like from the beginning, but this is also a game where the longer you play it the worse and worse the performance get gets because of these memory leaks. So a lot of the times, if you're getting to the point where it's starting to like really chug and you're getting like pop crazy pop in and all these glitches start to happen. Usually if you shut the game down and reopen it, um, it, that goes away. Right. And so that, that gives me hope for some, some sort of patch. Yeah. I think you know? obviously the biggest issue is just like rush, like that this game, yeah. the production schedule, as somebody said in our discord, like is more important than anything else. And like the, the op, it wasn't optimized. I mean, you know, we can talk about, and we should talk about, you know, a lot of people bring up now, maybe this is proof that this should, that it's time for a new switch hardware and, and maybe, but like clearly Xenoblade Chronicles three exists and doesn't have, Right, like is has a thirty frame rate that's got big. I can confirm that game does exist. <laughs> it and does. It, Matthew yeah, can yeah. confirm it exists. It, I'm not it, convinced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced that Black Chronicle Three is real. And the frame rate is significantly better uh, than Pokemon. Yeah, so Pokemon it's just Scarlet. not optimized. And yeah, like you said, David, maybe they'll and maybe because of all this bad press, they'll crank out a few patches. But but maybe not. I don't know. Like um, Pokemon Company doesn't put out. I mean, Game Freak doesn't really do many post game patches, right? But it's like the it's been you know every review talked about, and it's like you know, and fans are usually like you know people are very accepting, forgiving. Yeah. Of a lot of stuff, right? But everybody is like, is like, yeah, no, it's got problems, <laughs> you know. No one's like trying to pretend like this doesn't exist. Uh, Chad, what are, what are your what are your thoughts? What's your been, experience been like? 
Yeah. Well, so I don't know much about game development, but I, you know, I do think to myself, somebody looked at this and said, this is okay. <laughs> we're, this is good enough. And, you know, I think that that's telling, you know, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Um, you know, I don't know if it's just uh, people's opinions at Game Freak that this thing's going to sell anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Or it, are we going to be able to fix it at a later point? I don't know. Um, it, but it does take me out. And this is the first time um, in all of the games that I've ever played at for uh, Pokemon, this is the first time it's really affected the experience. Right. I think that's telling right like what you just said because you're a big pokemon fan you play them all and i think that's the only reason i think that your question earlier david where i'm a little bit like maybe this will have an effect on on things about their schedule about their ambition i hope it's a good effect because i could see it going the other way of us being like oh, well, let's, we let's tried dial open world in the let's open dial world. it in yeah, yeah like like let's scale oh it back God. um like because i could see that being a little bit of something that comes out of this it's like they don't need to be this ambitious because it'll sell anyway. And this just caused problems. Um, well, I feel like I know what, who to blame here. Right. Um, and it's us. It's the fans. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I think it's the Pokemon company, right? Because we need to take a step back. And cause you were saying somebody had to sign off on this, right? First party Nintendo games. Right. They don't sign off on this shit. Right. But they kind of did in this instance because the Pokemon company is comprised of three different parties. Right. The Pokemon company is Game Freak, Creatures Incorporated, and Nintendo. And they're three part owners of the Pokemon company. Right. Um, and they each kind of have a say. Right. I think, you know, the Pokemon company obviously has schedules to maintain they've got the anime they got toys they have all this merchandising and that's where they make i mean they make a shit ton of fucking money off the games because they sell incredibly but the games are almost just advertisements for all the merchandising right um and so i understand that it's very important for them to get a game out on time right but i think that's why this passed lot check you know i think most games would not have passed a quality check like this in Nintendo's repertoire, except they were like, look, like if, because Nintendo has so much of an investment in the Pokemon company, if like, it's not just that Nintendo is getting a cut of all the game sales, you know, because Nintendo, this isn't a Nintendo developed game. Game Freak developed this game. Right. But it's like Nintendo has a vested interest in this getting out on time because they also get a cut of all the merchandising sales because they're part of the Pokemon company. Right. So it's like, it's just kind of fucked, you know, it's like, and, it, and I'm just trying imagining, I'm trying to imagine a world where Legends Arceus came out this month and this game came out next year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like both games would have been so much better. There's zero reason why Arceus and Scarlet and Violet came out in the same year. Like you know, I think that's a part or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's absurd, you know? And, 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 it, and it's like, you know, I just think that game freak, has just have to has has to have this horrible crunch culture, you know. Like we don't hear it about must. it. We don't hear about it because Jason Schreier doesn't like fucking have Live people in, Japan, in the Japanese yeah. game industry. He only really has ins in the you know in the American games industry or Western markets. But it's like you know it's For- and, and, and but it's not a Japanese thing either because a lot of companies don't do this. Like um, I'm not sure which R and D or or NPD it is, but or whatever they're fucking called EAD. Well, whoever the team is that does Animal Crossing and Splatoon clearly are okay delaying their games. They don't have a problem with crunch culture, and those games are excellent. You know what I mean? Both Animal Crossing and Splatoon were delayed, right? And that's the same studio, right? So it's like this is a this is a game freak problem, but I think more than that, it's a Pokemon Company problem. And there's something really, really wrong at the top where they're overworking their fucking people to a point where this game ha- could be good. And I think in a lot of ways it is, but it like it deserves so much more and it just wasn't given the opportunity. Yeah. I, I'll try not to talk too much. Cause I feel like I'm talking too much, but like, uh, no, you're not what you're saying, David, like, I think, I think about that too. I like, I look at this game and when I'm playing it, like, I'm like, man, there's a lot of stuff in here. And so, and so much of it works well, but so much of it's janky too. And how they, how they, you know, wins, how quickly they must've 
gotten all of this done that that's scary to me almost like how mm-hmm. hard they must have worked on this and for it to be in this state which is surprisingly good and bad i don't know uh yeah we should move on and talk about more details about the game but it's hard not to just focus on this aspect no of i know because it's so disappointing it's so it's such a it's so unfortunate because the game is so good i don't know last thing i'll say on it too is look game freak whatever your next gen is supposed to be released add another two years to it push the <laughs> fucking plushies back another two years dog you can afford it it's the biggest <laughs> selling ip in the entire world right you know what with that extra time maybe you could have time to uh localize and record some voiceover as well oh my god you know, like it's fucking, glaring yeah yeah it's like getting to the point where it's like you're gonna need time to do that anyway so give your fucking developers some time to polish this shit up yeah. anyway sorry voiceover. i'm over yeah all right well I, that's hard you brought up voiceover it does i don't want to just be negative because like but the beginning of this game with all that text and no voiceover and the and lots of the just and no and no even like wah wah kind of stuff nothing like just just the the bing you would take banjo kazooie voices yes. in oh yeah i'll take like uh, animal crossing but even that probably takes effort or you know what i mean like because it's real yeah. or whatever like but like um god god forbid they put effort in too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway what 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 is good what is good we talked about what's bad what is good um or what is what is keeping you playing or what is like uh work the music you think the music's good music's great i think the transitions for uh the the different (laughs) music transitions to the the world the music transitions from like the the towns to some of the cinematics or the some of the like the the school when you move from room to room those tonal (laughs) shifts and kind of music and how they change some some genres or like stylings of the music is really fun and enjoyable. I'll hop in here. Um, for me, uh, a couple things. Uh, first off, the way that you traverse the world, I do like the fact that there is uh, one ride Pokemon. Um, you know, in Legends Arceus, you had, I think, five. Um, yeah. And you had to sort through what which one you needed to do for which task. And this time you have just one one that rules them all. Um, which is really cool. Uh, and I, I really do appreciate that. Um, and then for a, a long time gamer, uh, Pokemon gamer, um, the quality of life, um, improvements are great. They carried in a lot of the stuff from legends Arceus that I, I really enjoyed, um, and have made things that, um, have typically taken so much time, just a lot <laughs> easier. So, um, you know, from a competitive standpoint, there's a lot of time that goes into making sure that your Pokemon are the right natures and they have the right abilities and the right move sets with the right egg moves. A lot of that is streamlined in this game, which is really, really nice. Mm. The auto battle is pretty nice. The the way that works. Yeah. The let's go mechanic, right? I guess that's what that, or is that, or is that different? I don't think it's in let's go. I don't know. No, no, it, no, no. It's, it's called let's go. Oh, let's in this go. Game. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if you press R, I think it's yeah. let's go. And if it's ZR, you like throw it out for like a specific thing. I think, I think that's smart. Um, I think it's cool. It's nice to have your Pokemon just like running around next to you. That was another thing from Arceus, right? Uh, and let's go, I guess. Um, they would like kind of follow you around. Um, um, yeah, that's good. I think the traversal feels good. Although some of it is I'm just taking advantage of glitches, like, <laughs> like straight up. Cause I'm still early in the game. I haven't like evolved my, uh, Maridon yet. Right. Um, cause I have Violet, well, by the way, which, which, which one did you get? Chad, did you get Scarlet or Violet? Scarlet. Okay, cool. Gotcha. What about you, Patrick? I am playing your copy of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Violet here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're a Scarlet and a you're Violet, Chad. but, um, mm-hmm. But like, you know, if you back your ass up to the edge of a cliff and you jump and go backwards, you can scale cliffs. I'm doing that like crazy right now. (laughs) There's basically like nothing I can't climb right now. And I feel really good about that. There Uh, you go, David. Your climbing mechanic is intact. (laughs) I guess you're right. I guess that's why I do it. That's why I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I don't care. But um, yeah, I, I, I like it. I am a little, I don't know how much I can't tell if I think this game would be better if it had scalable Hmm. leveling or not. Uh, You know what I mean? Because it's like, 
I love that it's open and I love that I can do whatever I want, but it means if I jump to the fifth gym early for the challenge, I'm still going to have to go back to that level one gym at some point and just kind of like mindlessly mash through it. What, 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 do, you, what do you think about that, Chad? Do, what do you think about the, the lack of level scaling in this? Yeah, that's the one thing that I want so bad. Um, so, yeah. uh, you know, some sort of like difficulty setting. Um, and I think that the, the, the scaling would help with that. Um, what I've found myself doing is um, before the show, uh, uh, we were talking about uh, Pokemon Home and I am one of the uh, prime users uh, of that service because I have what they call a living dex. Mm. Um, which is that you catch every single Pokemon in the form and uh, gender differences, everything. Anyway, in saying all of that, what I've spent a lot of time doing in this game is, of course, catching all the new ones so that I can put into Pokemon Home. But because of that, I'm finding myself really overleveled mm. and I'm steamrolling some of the gym leaders and uh, bosses that, you know, normally would be, be a little bit more of a challenge. So. Right. I really do wish that there was some some sort of difficulty uh, that uh, for someone who's played around for a long time, uh, it could offer more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. I will say I, I did get right before we recorded, I was playing and I got to my first team star uh, outpost or whatever that they have. Right. Um, and I did the thing where you like send your guy out and you have to beat 30 other people. And that was super easy. So I was feeling really good. And then I kind of got my ass handed to me by the, uh, the big car. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so that was, I was a little bit surprised by that. I was like hanging on by a thread. I was like using all my fucking super potions and trying to like survive. And then I just, I, it didn't, it wasn't in the cards for me. I did end up losing that. Um, so it's like, there are def definitely difficult bits, but that is something that goes into something I like, which is that the three like kind of storylines, like you don't have to just do like eight gyms in a row. You can kind of like, jump around from objective to objective. But I feel like even doing that's going to level up my guys even faster and make the gyms even easier. Right. Some of this is open world game problem. One Oh one. Like, like it's, it's not a, just Pokemon, right? Like, or not just this Pokemon. It's, it's just any open world has this problem of leveling and, and what it should be, but it does feel particularly off a little bit. Like, like sometimes it's just, it's just way too hard. And then, Sometimes you just get over leveled and you're just crushing everything in this game. And I don't know what the answer is. I think there's that. room for both. If you want to have a couple of areas which don't scale, mm -hmm. um, which are you, that's the you have like a beginning area, which are all low level Pokemon. Um, and then maybe another area that allows you to experiment and fail and die and like catch Pokemon. Then the rest of the world um, scales to your, to your levels. There's got to be a yeah. middle ground between the two because uh, if I played Breath of the Wild and know that the enemies didn't scale or the the weapons didn't scale to the level, then I would have no reason to visit uh, the areas to revisit the areas which I've already explored. Mm. I mean, Breath of the Wild kind of had this problem too, to be yeah. honest. Or Every the open inverse game does a little bit the inverse yeah. difficulty curve, right? Where like. Yeah. Breath of the Wild was really hard in the first like 10 hours or 20 hours even. And then you just get a bunch of really great weapons and then you, and you get better at playing the game and you just kind of then the rest of the game is kind of a breeze. Right. So it's not a unique problem for for this game. No. Right? Uh, well, um, are there any other gameplay changes or or things that you like about this, Chad, or, or things that you don't like? Because I know you mentioned that there were some changes that you, you liked yeah, and you didn't Curious, like. Chad. You mentioned uh, some of the competitive changes. Like, could you speak to more of, like, from the perspective of, like, you playing this game competitively? Sure, sure. Well, um, the game offers a lot of, of ways to kind of speed up what used to be tedious. So... Um, in previous entries, when you were trying to, to get the right Pokemon, like I said, with, with all of the right features and everything, um, it's, you had to spend a lot of time breeding and that is something that has been a big improvement and it's been vastly different than what we've seen in previous titles. So the way that it works in this game is that you go to a picnic <laughs> and that's where you get your, um, your eggs. Um, and in the past games, you would always have to go to a Pokemon, uh, nursery and so the fact in this game that you can set up uh, your picnic anywhere and and try to like look to see are you getting the right things 
Um, if not, you can trash that Pokemon, you can start over. That's been nice. Um, and so the way that you also, um, I guess, make sure that you get the right natures and, and everything, you're given all of those tools really early on in the game instead of having to wait until post game, um, which has mm. generally been the case for, for more other art for other Pokemon games, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gotcha. interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't bred any Pokemon yet. So I'm kind of, it's kind of wrong. I guess I've never, never done that in a Pokemon game before. So that's kind of a new mechanic for me. Um, yeah. Interesting. I do uh, like the idea of a David. Ha have account. you made some uh, some sandwiches for your Pokemon? Yeah. Speaking have you, of no, I've bread, yet, bread, I have yet to make it. <laughs> <laughs> There's breeding and breading uh, yeah. in this game. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I have not. I mean, I bought sandwiches at a store, but I haven't made my own yet. <laughs> uh, You're a go I know, I, go out to eat kind of uh, Pokemon <laughs> family. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my character is loaded, so I don't have to worry about <laughs> buying groceries. Uh, but <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think it is probably worth talking about the multiplayer and the co-op mm. in this game, right? Because there is co-op, which was something that to me was kind of a a big selling point. I was like, damn, you can play this game in co-op. That sounds kind of cool. But then I was like, but then no one knows what it's like. None of the none of the reviews had online working. Right. And so I just tried it out the other night on my stream for the first time uh, with that guy who gave me all those free Pokemon and like, uh, and it's like almost pointless, right? <laughs> like, like, I don't know if you guys, have you guys tried the co-op online play at all? I mean, Patrick, no. you probably haven't cause you've been playing in airplane mode. No, but, uh, <laughs> but I've watched you play it on your stream the other night. And I came to the same conclusion of like, it's pointless. Like, or, or like, I guess it's fun if but it's yeah it's also on the switch with no voice chat and no like you know what i mean so like right you're kind of missing like the social aspect of it which is what it would be well it's if you don't know how it works it's because i didn't know either until i tried it but it's basically like the person just shows up in your world and they're just in your world but i don't think you can like fight you can do raids together right but you can't like go and do gyms together or anything like that right or, or or if they go to a gym, they'll just have their own experience. Ex yeah. yeah it's it instance like of it. the gym, I guess. And you'll kind of have your own instance of the gym. I think kind of what most of co-op comes down to is like seeing them in the background running around during a battle. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean, giving each other things, yeah. I guess. And but, but, but surprisingly, I do think it's good that like once they're in your game, they could just go do whatever they want. Like you can go somewhere else and they can be in a complete other corner of the open world and it'll keep track of where they are. You know what I mean? And it seems to not be choppy or laggy or anything. It's just kind of like, it just works, but I'm kind of like, other than doing like terror raid battles, like what's kind of the, what's kind of the point, you know? Yeah. We also didn't really talk about terror raids what, or Terra rest, whatever it's called. Terra terrestrializing, terrestrializing. Chad is our Pokemon expert. What do you think about <laughs> this for a gimmick? No, I actually really like the idea um, because back to the competitive scene, it offers a whole nother layer. Um, basically, what happens is when you terrestrialize, um, you know, you you become that type. So something that might be a fire type normally when you uh, if you have a water terra type, now you're all of a sudden water. And so from a competitive standpoint you've got to think strategically how would i deal with this and uh what do i need to be on the lookout for um i think it's really cool um in game too one of the the things i like is that it's balanced in the fact that if you were to terrestrialize one of your pokemon you can't do it every single battle you have to return back to a pokemon center to i guess I like recharge yeah, yeah yeah and i i do like that part mm -hmm. I, I i have a question for you chad um so I like a lot of the Pokemon that I have when their Terra types are the same as their normal type. Is it possible to change their Terra type like you later? You can't. You can. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like that would make the competitive scene way more interesting then. Yeah. But um, <laughs> here's another part of it. So if like, let's say you have a, a normal type Pokemon and their Terra type is also normal maybe you don't want to change it um, because the way that it works on the back end is you have something called um, stab or same type attack bonus. 
Uh, and if mm. your terra type matches your, your regular type, you get even more of a stab uh, than you would normally, uh, no pun intended. Um, but like, let's say that you were a fire type and now you have um, the water type um, as your terra type you are going to get a little bit of a, a boost, but not as much. So there's all sorts of things to consider when you're, when you're putting your teams together. That's nice. good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I for one was a, a bit, um, I missed the strong style, agile style aspect of battling in Arceus, especially since there was no competitive battling in that game. And I kind of wished that I could, because I always wondered, like, what's what would that be like to play against my friends with this kind of new combat mechanic, where I'm not just fighting against, you know, other things, other computers or whatever, right? So, but I do think that this is a good addition. I think that they should just blend them. I think there's a lot from Arceus that they could continue to blend. Um, and I think, I guess, they have like an A team and a B team because there's no way they made this game in like nine months. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, there's that no game way. freak. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what they, yeah. We're 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, who knows? Uh, we don't know what goes on inside those walls, but uh, <laughs> we need a Japanese Jason Schreier stat. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I will say one other thing I kind of missed from Arceus. Now I'm kind of just totally changing the topic here. I apologize, no, great. but go for it. I do really miss the just throwing balls and catching mons. Yeah. Like that was like the flow of Arceus felt so good. Just going out and like catching because they because all what I, something I do like about this game is that they all kind of roam in packs, you know, mm -hmm. and like seeing the Pokemon in their natural habitat like is actually really good. I think and they all kind of have really unique animations and behaviors and stuff like that. And so like. When I see like five mankeys, like all grouped together, like it would be cool to just like catch a fuck ton of mankeys and then maybe sell them for money or whatever, right? <laughs> or, like to do whatever. But I think like, you know, like like even in, in Arceus, like you could aim where your ball goes and you can't in this game. And it's like, even if they just brought that over, like this game, I think would have felt a lot better to play in the open world environments. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. 100% but, I agree. Yeah. I do. I, what where a lot of my time is going right now is because I can't just throw a ball and catch something. I'm having to actually enter into a battle and uh, try to get its health down to the right percentage, and then throw the ball and hope that it sticks on the first time. So yeah, I agree there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've been trying to think like of a comparison of a different type of game franchise that has similar mechanics but has different mechanics throughout the series. I think something like. Like Assassin's Creed, which is generally the same game throughout, but uh, each game has some type of gimmick similar to Pokemon. Uh, in like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you can like call your other assassins to like kill the other the other people you're attacking. Um, and I bring that up because these are two games in the same franchise, but play so similarly, but also so differently that uh, they're asking you to engage with its world, but because they play so differently, but they look the same, it uh, it is jarring switching. If you're, mm -hmm. say, playing both uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus and uh, Pokemon Scarlet, maybe at the same time. I don't know. Yeah. What do y'all think? Um, now you have me trying to think of different uh, game franchises where there's that... And there's probably lots of good examples. I can't think of all Assassin's Creed is a great example because they do have two Assassin's Creed teams. Right? Yeah. There's like the team that made Odyssey and the team that made Valhalla are like two different teams. Right. Um, so it's, I think that's a pretty apt comparison. Um, but yeah, but it, it, it is weird. And I, and it, it comes back to that. They just came out in the same year. So it's impossible not to compare them, but then also because they were clearly being developed simultaneously, you know, it's like it's almost like they couldn't learn from what worked or what people liked about Arceus soon enough. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like if they had waited a while, they probably could have like worked in a few of those mechanics that worked. But but I also get why they are different. You know, I think like like I I don't necessarily hate that I have to bat. You know, I kind of missed battling wild Pokemon in 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 Arceus. And I felt like sometimes I just like didn't have to. But it'd be just it'd be cool if there was like a blend, right? Like, um, you know, maybe there are areas just where it's a free for all. Like, you know, 
there's like safari zones like throughout the open world or whatever where you can go and do the Arceus style gameplay, right? But um, you know, but then that would be making the game even fatter than it already is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big fat game. <laughs> Well, um, I, I think we should start to wind down this discussion. Um, is there anything, you know, it, and there's a lot to this, and but we've also maybe only been playing it for a few days, so maybe we'll continue to talk about it in future episodes. But anything we haven't talked about that anybody wanted to make sure to get in? I do want to say for, for all of the grievances I do have with this game, there is a lot of fun to be had. And yeah. so if you are thinking about, you know, should I hop in, should I do it? I would encourage you to do so. Um, I, I think where you're hearing my gripes are are from coming from a, a longtime player mm -hmm. uh, and kind of going back to the Legends Arceus, there were so many things that were introduced that I thought were great and not all of them were carried over to this game, which I, I really wish that they would have been. Um, but despite its flaws, I, I do have a lot of fun. Um, I think that the characters are great. I love the new Pokemon. The designs this generation are wild. Uh, which is good. Like I'm, I'm glad that they are, you know, moving in a new direction. Um, and overall, you know, I am having fun, um, but no going in that there are going to be some performance issues and, and some things that you will, uh, might raise your, your eyebrow, but, um, overall it's been a fun experience. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. Um, the game has got me right now. Like I'm into it, right. I want to keep playing. I don't think it was quite, the same like i have to jump back in like it was with arceus for me right like that game really sunk its teeth into me but you know i'm also still very early I'm, I'm i'm not nearly as far into this game as you are but um i do just man yeah i agree it's so fun and it's like you know theoretically probably the best pokemon game yet right like i mean we said the same thing about arceus as well right and it's like you know it's just man it's kind of like the Splatoon thing or, or the Mario Maker 2 thing, right? But that was with online, right? Like those games are like so good, but they're just like plagued with internet problems and connectivity issues and stuff like that. And to a point where like, it's almost just dominates the conversation, right? And it's just like, man, like Game Freak deserves better. Like, I don't think they're bad developers, regardless of how unplayable and awful little town hero is right <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they're not the best developers in the world but but i think it's like but like clearly like they have great ideas and it's like i think just man the pokemon company has to let them take their time and if that means the anime comes out and we're seeing the story of the game and we're seeing all the Pokemon before they're in the game, then fucking maybe that's worth it, man. You know, I think people are probably going to buy them anyway, even if they haven't played the games first, you know, I just think like, you know, but then are they ever going to change? You know, if this is the best selling Pokemon game on the switch, like, are they going to take any lessons away from this? You know, um, you know, I just, I just was playing it the whole time. just being like, man, how would this look with like, even like, ps3 graphics or, or you know what i mean like you know like just and you know like if this just like looked a little bit better like and i think the the one that got to me was uh at the very beginning whenever you're following maridon or uh or the other one what's the other one's name um karidon karidon yeah maridon yeah. karidon <laughs> but anyway, you're following him in that like cave it's another thing where it makes you walk you know, you can't get too close to it. You, you can like run until you're too close to it and then you walk. So I feel like the intention there is like, you know, and there's like some shit on the sides of the walls and it's kind of supposed to be this like kind of amazing moment. But I was like, this, this looks like dog shit. And it's like forcing me to slowly walk through this like terrible looking cave. I was like, man, if there was some like glowing crystals coming out from the side and like all this shit, this could be like a really awe inspiring, like cool opening to the yeah, game. Yeah, like the end of Pokemon Snap when you're in a, yeah, new new Pokemon Snap. I mean, yeah, like, when you're in a cave and yeah, it's you know it's hard to compare an open world game to a on rails right. shooter like that. You know, obviously you can make stuff a lot prettier, and Bandai Namco is probably just better at making games than Game Freak is. But it's like, <laughs> you know, I just the whole time I'm just like, man, I just wish that, you know, I wish this jump was like at the beginning of the Switch's life cycle. You know what I mean? I just like every time there's a new Pokemon game. They promise all this stuff and it's just this like little incremental bit better. And I just think it deserves so much more. Yeah. Yeah. I think I feel the same way. Uh, 
And I th- feel in Discord, we talk a lot about Andor and how good uh, Andor as, is as a, like a Star Wars TV show. It explores so much d- deeper things. And what I'm asking for here is just let's take some time to develop this game of the Pokemon to like make the, the gameplay a little bit deeper, um, doing great things in like the UI aspect um, and doing great things and like the the cameras uh, are are really fun and the Pokemon designs are really fun just to like round off some of the the sharp edges um, to create. Let's let's take some risks in the Pokemon franchise, like big risks. Cast a Diego Luna, <laughs> yeah, in the in the next <laughs> Pokemon game. <laughs> Put some voice acting in there for sure. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Patrick? What are your kind of final thoughts on this? I don't know. I I guess. I'm still not like sold on Pokemon. <laughs> like I really Patrick hate hates Pokemon. In, I kind of hate to be the negative Nancy about it, but like it, I the beginning of Pokemon games, I can't. It's just not fun, and like yeah. I can't. I don't want to play because it's slow and it's clunky, and then it feels like you can over level. And I just I was too old when the first one came out, so I've never been on on board. This one has been interesting because my son did kind of get hooked, and so. We'll see if he sticks with it or not. I think that'll be the question. And then maybe that'll affect my perception a little bit. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm still not a Pokemon fan. But it's okay. One day. I don't know. One the, day. Patrick. Yeah. The exploration part seems cool, I guess. Yeah. I don't want to be the closer talking about it like this. <laughs> Chad, it is up? fun. It is fun. It's it's fun and probably worth playing. Yeah. Chad, final thoughts. Yeah. Um, like I said, dig in. I, I think um, overall, it, it's a fun experience. Um, there are some issues, uh, but more or less, I if you are a Pokemon fan that has not bought in yet for one reason or another, maybe it's reviews, or maybe this is your first time hopping in, I, I still think that there's a good enough game here uh, for you to sink your teeth into. How about, how about this? The teachers are hot. There you, go. <laughs> you have hot teachers and, and hot professors so that'll that'll get you to play it uh, right. are we still thinking v- vaporeon still the most fuckable pokemon <laughs> i don't know there's a whole there's hundreds there's like 400 pokemon in this, oh, this time it, let this us know in the comments over a thousand now yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh anyway okay um we should close this out we'll we'll take a break um yeah but well first if there's anything we forgot to mention on on these games and you you know you're playing them and, and Definitely send us a note and we'll, we'll shout you out next time. And then, um, yeah, we'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll talk about the other games we've been playing recently. Patrick, tell me you played a game other than Splatoon this week. I, I tried Lunis, Lunistus. I Lunistus. Lun- I yeah. mostly played Splatoon, but I tried Lunistus, uh, the demo. I downloaded the demo as we were talking about it last week, and I played a couple of levels, um, and I enjoyed it. I think that it's got some of the problems of those 3D of 3D platformers in general, like the depth yeah. perception, and I feel a little bit miffed when I missed some jumps, but like uh, that's not my fault. But uh, it's it's definitely interesting, and I like the speed of it and. Um, and sort of double jumps and stuff like that. Um, I didn't spend a ton of time playing it, but I played some of that, and I think that might be it. I mean, I play a lot. So of you played a demo. You played a I played demo. A demo. <laughs> I played a shit ton of Splatoon and a lot of my own game, but I played uh, Lunistus a little bit. Um, you should definitely buy Lunistus. It's, it's only a, a couple it's, bucks. Right? It's five bucks. Yeah, it's five bucks, and it's like the, it's like a lot of the. Stuff you're talking about there are actually hold on. Sorry, let's see. Let's look at it. Did you say switch heads in your sneeze? No, I was just uh, it's just how my sneezes sound. Uh, switch heads. <laughs> oh, switch heads. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh audio listeners, which is all of you. Uh but uh uh no, it's like uh, you know, like there are actually like settings in the game uh that you can tweak. So like there's a like player shadow you can add that's mm. always underneath you that makes it easier to land on stuff um in the steam version it's gotten more updates than the switch version um but like uh they made it to where the camera you can look more straight down he just added that in a patch as well he's been adding all these like quality of life patches that's that people cool. have been asking for he's a really cool like solo dev um 
But yeah, I, I recommend it. And then like the longer you play too, like yeah, the more you get used to. I think, mechanics you know. there are and like really cool oh, level yeah. designs. And yeah, yeah. But cool. Anyway, I guess I'll go next because I'm still talking. Um, uh, if that's okay, Matt, I saw you grab the mic. Uh, it's okay. But, it's always all right. okay. <laughs> all right. Very good. Very good. Uh, I did play and beat Lunastus. Uh, I played all the way through. Um, I haven't got, I haven't like 100% of it. Because also, spoiler alert, when you beat that game, you unlock like two new characters. And it's not like a game like Tori 3D or Tori 2 where you get the characters and then it's kind of just like a fun thing to do is like play them as a different character. Like it, you know, the whole game, you know, changes and you can play through the whole game again and do all the unlockables again and everything. And like, you know, Tori, the character is actually one of the unlockable characters and they have it to where it's like, you get a double jump, but no attack and one hit death, right? Um, so, it become, but he's way faster, mm. right? So it kind of like is a spin on it. Um, and it's a really great, I mean, amazing replayability for a $5 game, dude. It's it's incredible. Also, it basically has Kong letters in it. <laughs> you, it does. That, I'm yeah, sure. that yeah, yeah, it's fun. got yeah. eight, the H-A-N-A. Uh, that I you definitely got give. some deaths going for those, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like optional kind of, every game should have, Kong letters. Every game should have climbing and Kong letters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just think that. Um, but yeah, so I, I played through that and I really, really enjoyed that game. I really recommend it to everybody. Um, I, like I said earlier, I played some F Zero GX. I'm finally like actually making my way through the story mode of that game, uh, which kind of requires a lot of grinding because you have to like buy each chapter of the story from the shop in the game. And sometimes you don't have enough points. So you have to like go back and play Grand Prix. Um, but it really makes you really good at it. Man, the story is so hard in F-Zero GX. Um, but I've been playing that on my Steam Deck. Uh, in addition to that, also been playing um, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, for a while, I was having issues getting that to run properly on my Steam Deck. Uh, but then I downloaded Decky Loader, which is like a plugins manager for the Steam Deck. And there's a way you can like have it to where it only works on like odd cores or whatever. I, just, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's like a toggle you can switch in one of these plugins that makes the game run like flawlessly. Right. So I spent like a good amount of time, like following YouTube tutorials, like getting the controls exactly where I wanted it. So I've got like the gyro for like aiming the, the little star bit shooter pointer thing now. And it feels really, really great to play on the steam deck. And I'm just so miffed that we never got uh super Mario galaxy two on the switch. So we only got the first one. Um, Cause I think Mario galaxy two is my favorite Mario game. Or 3D Mario game, anyway. Um, I do wonder if we'll ever see a second 3D collection, and it's just Mario Galaxy 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I always yeah. thought it would be cool if they did just like DLC for that. But then it was like, but then they made it to where you can't even buy Mario 3D All Stars anymore. It's like not on the eShop. So Nintendo is just a fucking weird. Nintendo's fucking weird, man. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> I don't know why the we're doing The story this of this podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's mainly it. You know, uh, a little bit of, uh, obviously, Pokemon Violet. Um, you know, I played, uh, okay, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, at the uh, rap party for um, for Christina's uh, pilot, uh, we did play some Birio Kart, uh, which was really fun. Uh or it's also called Don't Drink and Drive. Have you guys played this version of Mario Kart before? Explain. It's basically where you do a race, and before the end of the race, you have to chug a beer, uh, or you have to finish a, a beer, but you can only drink when your controller is down, like on the table, right? So it's like, so it's called Don't Drink and Drive because you can't drink while you're driving. So it's like, I think the pro strat is to just chug the beer, the, the beer as fast as you possibly can right at the very beginning. Cause then you like start in 12th and you get good items and it's a little bit easier to get back up to first place. But theoretically you could like do half the race, the the end. drink half your beer, get all the way to the end, try to chug it before people catch up to you or whatever. Um, so uh Birio cart is very fun. Uh, and played some of that and got um, pretty fucking drunk at that party. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are the games that I've been playing <laughs> this week. What about you, Matt? Uh, over here, I've been uh, wrapping up Bayonetta three. I like it. It's uh man, I just need more wild, ridiculous, insane games in my life. I just love how ridiculous Bayonetta 3 is. And so I'm I'll probably wrap it up in the next couple of days. I'm uh excited to roll credits on Bayonetta 3 so I can spend more time in Pokemon. Oh yeah. Are do you think you're gonna go back and play one and two after playing three? 
Uh, uh, no. <laughs> you say you want more crazy games and uh, you don't want to play these other crazy it, games? I don't know. It's hard to play games that have uh, older games in a franchise when you've played the newest one. Like, David, you went through uh, all of the Metal Gears, but if you would have started at Phantom Pain and worked your way backwards or maybe played Metal Gear chronologically from a story perspective, it would be really hard and difficult. Um, so I just watched a YouTube video of the story recap so I can understand how, uh, <laughs> okay. the, how the Bayonetta's, uh, connect all gotcha. the games connect to each other. Well, don't uh, say, don't say that too much. Cause that's my dad's plan right now. He's playing Phantom Pain and then he wants to go back. <laughs> well, listen up, uh, David's dad. I got a news to tell you. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> uh, that's the games I've been playing. Uh, Chad, how about you? Uh, Pokemon pretty much nonstop. Although I will say, um, over the weekend, um, I did, uh, have a game of Mario party, mm. uh, with my family and it is cutthroat. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, you might, um, have a beer thrown at you or something like that. If you, uh, happen oh. to get some bonus stars, <laughs> um, some promises of, of, uh, divorcing you from the family, of course. Um, uh, which of course that is part of the charm. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I do believe that some stores have that game, um, coming up on sale for black Friday. So if you haven't checked it out, you might look into it. Yeah. All right. So you were playing superstars. Yeah. Yeah. Superstars, yeah. That's a good one. So Mario Party and your family causes uh, physical violence and legal trouble. For sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know you lived uh, with a bunch of professional wrestlers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get hit with a chair. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah they, I got a bonus star and then all of a sudden it was a hell in a cell and it was, <laughs> it was really crazy. Pins anywhere. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Thank you so much, Chad, for coming on and talking to us today. Um, thanks to MilkyWay.co, who does our website. Thanks to Corduroy for doing our music. If you're looking for me, Patrick, online, you can find me most places as PBYX. Hey, I'm Matthew on Twitter, M-A-T-H-Y-O-U. I'm pretty much ever on the internet at Monolith Fiji, uh, including Hive, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> we all are on Mastodon and Hive now. Yeah, <laughs> I grabbed a Hive username. Uh, just I haven't done anything with it, but now I have it. Uh, and then uh, what about you, Chad? Where can people find you online? Uh, that's a good question. Um, sometimes you can catch me on Instagram and I have to actually look at my name because that's how much I don't get on there. <laughs> but uh, it is Chadillac ATX. If you ever want to find Very good. That's a good name. You better grab that on Hive before somebody takes it. <laughs> yeah. What's Hive? <laughs> It's, it's the, the newest Twitter replacement. It's that the thing that, Mastodon. Yeah, today everybody on Twitter was like, here's my Hive account. Uh, Last week it was Mastodon. Yeah, apparently it's a lot better and more streamlined than Mastodon. Can um, we go but back I'm to also y Yik Yak? <laughs> Do you remember what Yik Yak? What the fuck is that, old man? I've never heard of that in my life. <laughs> it's where you anonymously, anonymously post stuff. Are you games. sure? Are you sure you're not Joe Biden right now? <laughs> it was I, down in the, in the field with Yik Yak and Big Bang. Uh, are we still talking about the Build, build Back Better plan? Is that infrastructure? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Joe oh, Biden listen, has, has uh, came upon my body. I am now his his uh, his vessel. Oh okay, boy. we can end. Uh, anyway, <laughs> if you'd uh, like to find our show on social media. We are at Switchheads on Twitter, at Super Switchheads on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we've also got a website, switchheads.com. And then we got our Discord and our Facebook group. Um, oh boy, the Discord is such a wonderful place. Uh, you should definitely join the Discord. It's such a great place. Everybody, Pokemon Channel is popping off right now. Everybody's kind of giving uh, their thoughts on the game, sharing, trading, doing lots of tips and tricks. It's a great time. And we're always playing Splatoon in there as well. What a great uh, time to be alive. Uh, and once Twitter goes down, Discord's going to be all that's left. So make sure you join us there. Uh, and um, and yeah, I guess that's going to do it uh, for uh, today's episode uh, on uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, I guess I will say make sure you you know follow us on, uh, on, on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like us. Let's get that uh, algorithm working in our favor, folks. Maybe coming up on year four. Maybe this is the year that YouTube's going to pop off. We'll see. Uh, we're going to be back next week with an all brand new episode. Can't wait for you guys to hear that. But in the meantime, you guys know the drill. Stay safe out there. Uh, be kind to yourself. Be kind to one another. Uh, you know, um, 
trying to come up with something else. I can't come up with a funny one this week, guys. I got brain fog. But that's going to do it. We'll see you next week. We love you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.